With that being said, we are going to dive right into a new fan favorite. It's Dana White's favorite part of our show. Combat Corner. Combat Corner. Combat Corner. Uh, this one's going to be interesting because Rudy typically takes this one. Uh -oh. But I have a lot to say this week. Uh -oh. It's going to be rare. It's going to be rare. Uh, Rudy, are you, are you ready? Right. I've been waiting. We we were watching that fight <laughs> via uh, text message. I'm gonna take off my hat. I've been waiting for this one. Oh, Get going, God. bro. <laughs> okay, let's start off by saying boxing is theater. It's theater. I came up boxing. I understand the business behind it. Um We grew up watching Mike Tyson fights. It was theater, it was like a movie coming out. You know, but then things got laughable. You know, streamers got involved and started to take away from my sport. Then it just got downright weird. Boxing just got weird. But I just have to start off by speaking to Devin Haney. What the fuck were you doing? No, seriously, what the fuck were you doing? Because I'm a Devin Haney fan. And most real boxers know, like real boxers know. Devin Haney is a superior defensive tactician. When he got hit that first time, it was like someone threw cold water on him when he was asleep. He just didn't, he didn't fucking see it coming. And this is a guy who's fought I Lemonchenko, mean, Kambasis. Like, he's fought heavy punchers that have given him rounds. And he just ate him. That punch felt like it, it, go back to see his reaction. Like, Rudy, his reaction, it, it was just, it was shocking to him. It was shocking to him. And I instantly knew this motherfucker's in trouble. Because I've never seen him react that way to a punch. Never seen him react that way. So I said to myself, okay, he's probably the most comparable to Floyd Mayweather we've ever seen. Mayweather's been rocked before, but he gets it back. So I said, oh, no, Haney's going to get it back. He's going to get it on the points. He's going to win the fight on the points. That was a bunny punch. Ryan Garcia, who I refuse to call king, he's not my king, proceeds to put on a Bud Crawford style ass whooping on this man. Round after round, he he's just he's he's, he's getting his points. He's he's, just, he's finding his openings. He's and like I don't want to hear anybody talk about the height difference. No, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Haney is a defensive tactician. I'm going to give that to him. And I'm going to start go back by saying, if they have the rematch, I think Haney wins. I'm going off and saying that. But this fight, Garcia showed me two things. One, I've always knew how skilled he was. I think as a complete fighter, he can't touch some of these guys. But the man probably has the best jab or rear hook in all of boxing and Haney you knew this you guys fought six times coming up in the amateurs you know this he's he won three of the fights this is not someone that's new to you everyone knew that there was a possibility that this guy could win the fight like let's be real I love Tank Davis but Ryan should have never took that fucking fight he went underweight he had a hydration clause None of that shit made sense. His own people told him. Bernard Hopkins, who's one of the top guys at Golden Boy, who was a former fighter forever, told him not to take the fucking fight. And he took it. But it showed people how much heart he had. That being said, Haney, you let us down. You let us down. Uh, you let real boxing fans down. Because now this guy gets the ability to talk shit for the next six months. Ryan, you deserve it. You get to talk shit to everybody for six months. You deserve it. De La Hoya. It's hilarious that you're taking credit for this fight. <laughs> it's hilarious. Because you left my man Ryan hanging when Tank dropped him. You left the fucking arena. 
he had no support. No fucking support. People would have thought that he was the money team. All the love he received after that fight that he lost were coming from Tank's team. Like, none of his people stood around. So I just thought it was interesting after this fight. These guys were chirping at the Haney camp and now it's Golden Boy, Golden Boy, and everyone's there. And it's like, wow, this guy didn't get the support in a loss, though. He didn't get the support in a loss. Hey, Nick, man. I've been to a lot of your games, man. I don't think I left the stands if you took a loss. I wouldn't be a friend. I wouldn't be your brother. I, 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 I was there. I was there through the wins, the championship wins, the losses. I was there, supported you. But these guys that made millions of dollars off this kid's back were not there when Tank dropped them. I, I just thought that was interesting. That's, that's my second point for that. Third point. Haney. A little birdie. Um, aka my brother Rudy Rodriguez Shomont brought to my attention that you celebrated the loss. I'm utterly flab- flabbergasted by that. Utterly. You have to remember the first belt that you won, everyone discredited you for it. You were a champion and people had an asterisk next to it because they, they gave you an interim belt. No one, but then you fought, you went through the ranks and you won real belts. You went to Australia, beat this guy twice, beat Lomachenko, who, well, I personally think that was split, whatever. But you really beat some real people and you got the respect. I always gave you the respect because I came up boxing and so I know how good you are. But it's like, you know this, your cat knows this. You were discredited for the belt you got. Now you're celebrating. The belt you shouldn't have because this kid didn't make weight. What the fuck are you? What are you doing over there? What are you doing over there? And I'm not a fan of the big three. That's top rank, golden boy, PBC. Some may say big four because of match from boxing. Um, boxing promotions are probably the most cutthroat industry in the world. I, and I mean more cutthroat probably than dr- the drug business. It's pretty mm-hmm. fucking. It's wild. It's wild. And you're talking about someone who works in UFC for years. That that shit is wild. Haney does his own things. He's he he's smart. He does one two fight deals with top rank. He does he he has the freedom to make his moves and, and I think that's incredibly intelligent for him. He's just not as marketable as Ryan Garcia and Tank, but if he becomes that he can make a ton of money. But sometimes it shows that he doesn't have this um, major figure like a, a, a golden boy in a match room and these guys behind it because you can see sometimes they're not polished. Um, Rudy brought to my attention a video of uh, Bill Haney getting into it with Floyd Mayweather um, on the internet. And and I'm, I'm a person that likes to... Uh, have a sense of decorum when I'm in the room. I drink wine with my pinky up. <laughs> I read books. Um, I watch the news. So I just, I, I try to present myself in a certain light. And I, I remember that I'm a person of color. Hey. So when I saw, the, um, so when I saw the video, I was utterly, uh, bougie. Bougie? Tight ass? I don't know what you said. But um, I was I was upset, Rudy. I was. Nick, I was upset because we we have, have people of color, minorities. We have to present ourselves in a certain light at all times. At all times, we have to. And when you're in a position of power where the world can see you, especially on a stage like boxing, you're being judged for everything you do. So you have to know as someone's representative, parent, associate, any, anything you do affects the fighter. And these are fighters that are trying to sell pay-per-view fights. You're trying to get the public to spend $80, which I won't, um, to watch your fight. And, and yeah, we're buying into the spectacle of it all. But boxing is like every other sport. You're trying to get younger fans. 
every sport is trying to do that. They they want if you can get a boxing fan at ten, they're gonna be a dog boxing fan for the next fifty years. That's every sport's trying to lock in their next group of fans for the next fifty years. So when you do things like that for bo- for both of them, Mayweather and Haney, it's like, hey, you guys have other fighters that you want to represent. You do have to know when your personal disagreements with each other affect the people you represent. And so I wasn't a fan of seeing it. I just thought that could have been something that happened over FaceTime. I'm not sure why they cho- chose to um, have this dialogue on Taylor Swift's internet. Not really sure why they chose to do that. That was weird to me. And no matter what their backgrounds are, I respect both gentlemen. They've done a lot for the sport. Um, I love what Haney's doing, but I will say as a fan, he let me fucking down. Um, fourth. Fourth. Ryan Garcia, I think you need therapy. I do. I think I think you need to go away. You have a you have a ton of money to um to like a retreat in Palm Springs. Uh, I I think you live in California. Some are real fucking nice, real nice. Um, cause your interviews have been all over the fucking place, all over the place. It's um, and I'm not want to call anyone out. I'm I'm saying it from a place of love. You're boxing. You've been boxing since I think four years old. You're probably taking a lot of hits to your head. Probably I'm not saying you have CTE. I'm just saying you're, you're out of control. That that post fight interview, some people thought it was entertaining. I was terrified. I was, I was goddamn terrified. Um, and 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 the reason I want to throw that out there is you know your your boss, uh, Oscar De La Hoya had to battle a lot of demons throughout his career. A lot of people who aren't fans of him that don't know him, he he's battled alcoholism throughout his entire career. He's battled drugs. You know, there were some cross-dressing things that happened. There was a De La Hoya battled a lot. And this is the guy you stand next to. So I've learned that you are, it seems like you have a good relationship with, um, uh, what's this one? Mexican guy. Oh, my God. I'm drawing a blank. Um, the face of boxing right now. Oh, my God. That's uh, one. What? Canelo. Canelo. What? Nick, what is wrong with you? Anyway. um. Oh my gosh, um, and you know, you never hear anything out of Canelo's camp. He's 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 practiced this level of professionalism for so long, and I think that's someone you you should stand next to. Seeing the way he 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 goes about his business is really really good. He doesn't get into any shit. If there's some things going on, we don't know about it. Um, if he hangs with El Chapo's sons, we don't know about it in Mexico. We don't know anything, and I love what he does. So I think you need to stand next to that. But I'm saying it from a place of actual concern. I think there's some internal things going on with uh, Ryan Garcia. And I, I speak to him because he's a father. He's a father of three. And he's a young man. So, you know, God willing, he has another 10 years of his career. He, he takes care of his mental. Uh, for real. So I'm just going to recap. Uh, one, Devin Haney, you, you let me the fuck down. Let me down. Um, uh, two, I think boxing is theater, and it's it's sometimes it's, it's embarrassing. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Uh, three, uh, Haney Mayweather, stop embarrassing us. Stop, stop. Like you, stop embarrassing people of color. Like you guys should have kept that shit on Facetime. Hit each other on the WhatsApp video chat. Like, come on now. And uh, four, Ryan Garcia, man. Therapy, therapy. They do it visually now too. There's apps for it. You can jump on the app. Do whatever you need to do, and just it's, take care of yourself, man. But I would love to see the rematch. I don't, Ryan. I don't want you to duck. I don't want you to go pick a scrub because I know Delahoy is probably going to have you go pick someone. That, no, do the rematch, dude. You didn't get the belt. Don't go up. Do not go up, man. You have unfinished business. Get those belts. Lock in 140 before you get to 147 because that's where the monsters are. So I heard him say, like, oh, no, I'm ready to take a nap. Hey, 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 relax. 147 are where the monsters are. Relax. B. Take care of 140. B, yeah. good question. You're in boxing. You box before and things of that nature. How big is three pounds of not making the weight affecting the fight? 
Mm. Not at all. Just not at all. It's not at all. That's more of a of a certification thing. Like they want to be able to keep the classes and the way they are. But everyone knows when you fight, especially on fight day, your weight fluctuates up and down. Uh, what that showed everyone was he wasn't disciplined. That's what that showed. It's like, because that's the number one thing you need to do. Like, you're doing that for the belt. You're doing it for the classification. Everyone knows, like, how important that is. Everyone doesn't play. So when you learn that he was drinking during the week, you, dude, one beer when you're on um, fight week, you can go up four pounds. It's like, that's, people don't play those games. So, like, to hear that he had all that wheat in his body, like, of course your 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 weight was up and fucking down. Like, it was just, it, it just showed, like, he just didn't take it serious. But it also should tell any other fighter how scary he is. He wasn't, he wasn't sharp. But look what he could do. Can, can I chime in real quick before we finish this up? Yeah. Um... I'm actually a big Ryan Garcia fan, and I really thought when they made the fight that he'd win the fight. And then he went on that weird little social media thing where he looked like he was <clears throat> losing his mind. And now I know he says now that it was all for shtick and fake, and uh, I don't believe that because I think a lot of fighters will say stuff after they win that they'd never say after they lose, or they'll say after they lose that they'd never say if they won. Like Jamal Hill in the UFC was healthy, 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 and all's great, and then all of a sudden he lo- he gets knocked out in three minutes, and he's crying and complaining about, I don't want to say crying, but, but voicing this, I took a short-notice fight, even though Alex Pereira took the exact same short-notice fight. So you're making excuses now for why you got knocked out. That's the sport. So I, I was concerned. And then when he missed weight, I don't think he missed by 3.2 pounds. I think he missed by a pound because he drank a beer on the stage, which if it's 16 ounces, that's a pound. He was wearing some long ass pants along with some heavy ass shoes. That could be a pound and a half there. So I don't think he was 3.2 pounds over. I think he's probably a pound, a pound and a half over maybe. That said, I'm, that that gave me cause to question, is this guy in shape? Now, even against Tank, I thought he beat Tank. However, that rehydration thing was huge because if you looked at how big he – he walked in at 160-plus pounds in that fight on Saturday. And he they showed pictures of him against Tank and again and in this one. He looked drawn the hell out against Tank. So – and I'm not saying that he'd beat Tank now if they fought at 147, but I think it's a much more competitive fight. Um but, man, Haney showed some massive deficiencies with his defense on that left hook. He got hit with it every single time. And I watched some analysis from some boxing experts where they are talking about how every time he throws his jab, it's like he cocks back, like almost like a bow and arrow type of thing. And when he got hit, his eyes looked like, oh, my God. And I am floored that one judge had it 112, 112, but I'm not, sh- I'm floored, but not shocked because it is, it's just boxing is boxing. I thought he, I had it 114, 109. Um, I thought Garcia really, God, he hit so damn hard. And when he decided he wanted to fight, Devin Haney had no answer. I have a question for you though, Don, on this one. Did you see the shorts that Devin Haney was wearing? Yeah. It was like he was wearing joggers. For yeah. boxing shorts. And by the middle of the fight, they, they were, were soaked. They were heavy. Who the hell? They're, they I mean, I know it's made by, it said Essentials on there. That's a clothing brand. But don't they make a, a you're supposed to wear like a, a freaking wick away short. That short had to be heavy. And it looked like he was wearing Uggs for boxing shoes. Oh, yeah. You know, it his was, outfit was, was weird heavy. to me. And it, 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 yeah. It's funny because a couple of people brought that up after the fight. It's like, yo, he was drowning. And, Drowning in sweat and those, and those shorts. shorts, and it's like yeah. these guys try to get. They want to be stylish in the ring, dude. Be fair, win. win the what fight. the fucking fight? Like, why are you guys having leather shorts with rhinestones? Like, this shit is. You're it, literally boxing is cardio. It's fucking cardio. Like, why would you add weight to yourself? It's just the. It's just the weirdest. 
thing is the weirdest fucking thing. Like when I saw him come out, first of all, Essentials is an off brand of Fear of God. Shout out to Jerry yeah, Lorenzo. Yeah. Um, those those garments are all heavy. They're all heavy. I have a shirt. It's heavy as hell. They're all heavy. Why would you? Like, so in my head, I'm like, is this an Instagram moment or you're fucking boxing? Like, like you guys want to be stylish. It's like some boxers, honestly, sometimes I feel like they want to be rappers. Like, some of these guys want to be rappers. Like, look at some of their Instagrams. Like, they, they, they really want to be rappers. And it's like, what happened to getting in there, doing your job, then being whoever the fuck you want to be? Don't come in the ring with that. I, I, it was funny because I never heard any of those. I never heard any of the commentators question his shorts. And I'm sitting here looking at the, like, these things are absolutely soaked. And they look like joggers. And I was like, bro, that can't be good walking around with that shit on. Man, I, I know in football, I wear the lightest things ever. Because I'm if I get beat for anything, I find any reason for me to say why I got beat. Oh, my socks were too heavy. Oh, my... Um, my gloves were didn't fit right. Oh, my pants, my tights were, my tights had uh, had extra string in them. Like I find any reason to be light as possible when I'm playing a sport that needs to be dynamic and moving around and have agility and speed and things of that nature. So I don't get why would you like like um what's Deontay Wilder when he came in that time? Like what are you thinking like? Even the day before, I'm trying to think of all the things um, in my mind to be as light as possible the next day. Like, I, I, I prepare that way. And the day of, I have a regimen of, of how to eat and, and things in that nature and how I move around and know the sex. My wife's trying to, trying to hop on me. I, I, not tonight. I got a game tomorrow. I need my legs. <laughs> And I, and as much as you I know, want to, you want to know, what's so crazy, Nick. As much forever, as I want to get in, it, no. But I was gonna say, add to that is, and all boxers know when you're coming up, the number one thing you go get first are your shoes. There's two brands that most people get, Everlast and Ringside, because they're so light. That's why people box in Everlast and Ringside shoes they're so light so started mm. to see these guys come up with like and sneakers it's like what what the when i saw his shoes i thought they were yeezys i thought they, they were like, like uggs to me bro i said like, what <laughs> I'm like, what are they <laughs> this man is probably gonna run and bro and typically you're doing like four or five miles bro in a fight well, of cardio bro what I are you I doing I won't be shocked if I see a motherfucker pop out there with some motherfucking Timberlands. <laughs> Yo, because it's like, and, and a lot of it has to do with arrogance. It's like, I could wear anything and beat this guy. And my thing was, people were telling Haney's camp, hey, remember this kid came up with you. It's not like he's some joff. Bro, they came up the same circuit. Yeah, no, you. Bro, they literally, bro, Haney would win a tournament or Ryan would win a tournament. They the can't. Like, what are you doing? Their fathers have known each other for 10 years. Like, what are you doing? To go against, the toughest person to go against is somebody that knows you. Knows knows you. you. Know your every move. We worked out together. We did a little things together. We fought. We were competitive against each other. We know every move. I know what you're going to do when I do this and that. Like, we have been in a fucking circle before in a cave or in a ring. And Things have got hectic, and I know I know everything you're about, about to do. So when it really comes down to it, it comes down to who's the baddest motherfucker that night. Because whatever tactic and skill, that's out the window, man. It's just about being a tough motherfucker that day and outlasting the motherfucker because you want to, and you're doing all the little things to do it. Now, this is why things. I think he wins the rematch, and why I would love for him to, because people forget how amazing. The Pacquiao Marquez saga was and is. They fought four times. People only remember the fourth one because Marquez put him to sleep. Killed literally. Him. Killed he him. literally killed him in the ring. The cr- like, Nick, you have to go look it up. God. Pacquiao Dude, Marquez he knocked four. him out like Gaethje got knocked out. Like- it was bad. <laughs> but the craziest thing after that, Nick, Pacquiao goes on a run and re energizes his career. 
after that. He wins the belt again. He wins, wins the belt again. Belt again. Brought, beat Thurman <laughs> after that. We can beat Thurman. So it's like, a part of me really enjoys this happening because people are too much of this undefeated crap. Yo, Mayweather, Mayweather, fuck Mayweather was the only one that did it, and May people have to understand stuff. Mayweather he's, had Hame, Al Heyman, and he skated off it danger. Was scheduled well, he it was scheduled well. He skated off danger. He fought Pacquiao four years later than when he was supposed to. He didn't give Miguel Cotto a second a rematch. There was he was incredibly. Talented at scheduling and how Hangman did it amazing, but I think social this is gonna make Haney a better freaking fighter. That's social what I think. media made it. Social media made it like that also because they laugh at you, they pick on you. Like, damn, it's it's a sporting event. Like, I don't win all of them. The the, the real motherfuckers come back from a loss and avenge that loss and come back bigger, better, stronger, and avenge it. But the, the nowadays they make it seem like it's the worst thing to lose in a sport. Like. Nah, it's, it might happen, dog. Somebody might have been. I got one. I got one final thing. Actually, the official, the referee for that fight was atrocious. Yeah. Round seven, he Garcia drops Haney badly. I didn't know that he was gonna get up. He gets up and he spends literally the entire round holding him, like bear hugging him. And then at one point, he's being held so much, and the referee can't even pull him off that Garcia cracks him. And he immediately takes a point, which I thought was every boxing analyst said that was ridiculous. Should have been a, at least a warning. You, he won't let go. And you're making threat after threat after threat of the holding. For the most part in that fight, I thought Haney was the one doing almost all the holding. Garcia was doing that weird shit, turning his back and stuff. But Haney was holding nonstop. And in round seven, he held so much. I thought those next two were knockdowns too because he got hit with punches and then he kind of tumbled in the hold and fell down. And then he did it again. It's like, and you're giving this guy a break over. It was like, I don't want to say Harvey Doc was in Haney's corner, but he looked like he was in Haney's corner. And, and it, it got to be, it got to the point where it's like, bro, you're letting Haney hold every single time he gets tagged and you keep warning and warning and you're not taking a point from this guy. It was. It got to be too much to me watching that, and it's like the UFC when it comes to grabbing the fence and eye pokes. Like if you're gonna have a rule, make, you know, own the rule, live by the rule. Because when I what I saw in that fight, especially in the second half of that fight, was a hug fest from Haney. He was he wasn't throwing. He was a he he has he didn't have the power to scare Garcia to me at at a certain point. It was like Garcia was laughing it off. Um, and that last knockout, knockdown in the 11th, I thought Haney, I mean, you see his eyes. I was like, I couldn't believe he got up. And, I, and I'm impressed by that in itself. But I also don't want this kid to get badly hurt. You know, he's 25 years old. You know, God forbid. Like, you let these fights, sometimes these fights go on too long. Where you see a guy roll like that. Like, he was, he was busted. Busted the fuck up. I don't want to see the fight at 140. Garcia can't make 140. I want to see it at 147 if they want to do it again. I don't think Garcia can make 140. You know, but I shit wherever it's at, I'll watch it again for sure. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for us guys with Combat Corner. I know this was shocking to you know hear Donald come. That was awesome. Screaming, but I just I had to get those things off my chest. I um boxing is I love boxing the way Nick loves football. Um, I did it for so much of my life. It it brought a lot of joy to me. It kept me out of trouble, and I just really love the sport i would love to get max kellerman on call back corner one 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 day so we can discuss boxing with him and i heard my man damian lillard loves boxing as well all you boxing aficionados you guys need to go to combat corner and we could you know discuss some things um 